Hey gamers, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So we're back with a Vayne commentary guy, and now the Vayne build um, hasn't really changed um, a whole lot. Like really, there's only one minor change. I didn't really think I needed another updated complete guide because we have already gone through all of Vayne in the um, complete guide that we've done some time ago. So don't really think that is needed. Instead, we're just gonna go through it verbally and also in the match of course so um, Vayne's build is of course the Bay of the Rune King into the Solari Charge Blade normally you get one of the defensive boots because you already have enough life steal from Hunter Vampirism and Bay of the Rune King normally it's the play of steel caps unless there is a lot of CC then maybe the Merc Treads like if there's like a Morgana Twisted Fate probably the Merc Treads of course normally you get Zhonya's now I used to build Phantom Dancer after that but now I've changed my mind and I've actually gone for Infinity Edge after that and then Phantom Dancer O after Infinity Edge. So basically, the only change I have to Vayne's build is swapping the, the spots of Phantom Dancer and Infinity Edge. So basically, it I used to go for Bork, Solari, then the Phantom Dancer, then the Infinity Edge. But I find that with that, I'm kind of lacking in AD. So I have tried it out and I do think that Infinity Edge first is better or at least a BF sort first then into Phantom Dancer, but by this point in time, I already have my Charge Blade, so I do have a decent amount of crit. Therefore, I like to complete my Infinity Edge to get extra damages up, extra damage on my crit, and then I'll go for the Phantom Dancer, and then as my last item, of course, I will go for Guardian Angel. Of course, the Wits End is a option, as is is a like second item option if you are into a very heavy AP comp or is like a last um, item option instead of the GA if the enemy team like has one fed or two fed AP members in the later stages of the game or of course if your GA is down you can swap out with Wits End or something like that. So anyways, uh, Vayne's power level I will say hasn't really fallen all that much but I will say that uh, at least for myself I overestimated her power level especially in patch 2.5 and 2.5a. Yeah, I thought she was a little bit stronger than what she actually is. Now make no mistake, I still think she's a very solid, very good champion. However, I don't think she was as strong as I had imagined it to be. Basically because she still has a relatively weak early game but she has a very very strong late game. Uh, I think her, she's in a very good spot at the moment because any stronger in the early game she would be broken and any weaker in the late game or any weaker in the early game for that matter she would be pretty unplayable like what she was um, at a certain point in time in the meta. So I think now she's in an alright spot. Her early game is weak but not too weak and her late game is strong. Um, definitely not weak but I wouldn't say it's too strong too broken. So I think she's in a very good spot right now. I think she's pretty balanced. Of course you, you generally want to pick Vayne into any kind of heavy uh, tank compositions. So in this case I'm picking Vayne into a Leona, a Ramus and a Nasus. So I kind of hard counter that team. Of course, I'm also against a Jinx in the laning phase, which also means that I have a easier laning phase. Now, Vayne against Jinx is not a winning laning phase by any means, especially not with a Leona, who just committed suicide by jumping straight into our team. Nice dodge by me there to escape with my life. But here Ari comes in, I'm gonna die. So the thing is, of course, Vayne uh, does have mobility, but of course, if you get engaged upon by Leona, uh, it's not gonna go too well for you guys, guys saw over there. But against a Jinx, assuming that we don't take supports into account, Vayne doesn't actually win against Jinx because although both of them have very weak early games, Jinx has a range advantage. So if Jinx is playing properly, what she should be doing is when I walk up to CS, she should swap to her rockets and auto attack me once. Now what this happen what happens here is that she that's gonna poke me out. And over time, that poke is gonna accumulate and I she's gonna have a major health advantage such, such that I cannot all in her or, or such that her jungler might want to gank me to kill me even under tower but thankfully uh, the Jinx hasn't really done that all that well uh, she has attempted to do that we have seen her swap to rocket and try to to poke me out but she hasn't been very successful in doing that so here I'm here to back up my Galio in the fight I condemn the the Leona right into the path of the wave so really nice uh, teamwork there by me and the Nami of course we are on voice comms and we are a, a duo queue so Really nice there. Here, that allows us to pick up the dragon. Now, honestly, initially, I thought my team didn't really need me, so I was trying to, to 
clear out that mid wave so it doesn't just get lost to tower. But I see Ari and like Jinx um, showing up to the party, so I thought it would just be safer to show up to the dragon. Ramus is back as well, flashes over the wall for the taunt on the Galio and realizes he came in way too early for the smite steal. And we're gonna chase him away, he dies. We, uh, we get the dragon, Leona comes in and finds herself in a 1v4, she dies as well. So, a series of unfortunate events for the enemy team there, uh, all going in one by one and kinda dying and also before the dragon fight. So, getting the dragon and as well as a couple of kills definitely gonna be very good for my team. And on Vayne, in the early game, any kill or assist you get is gonna be really good. As a matter of fact, uh, of course, preferably you don't die, but like I mentioned a couple of times before in my in my Vayne videos, I honestly think that if you trade one for one on Vayne in the early game, I think that it is worth because of how weak Vayne is in the early game. I think just trading one for one is, is fine because uh, when you get a kill and the enemy gets a kill, likely like you will outscale them with that kill. So you can probably do more with the goal than they can. and. Honestly, um, Vayne is one of the hardest scaling champions in the game. Like late game, she's really a monster. Of course, like um, Jinx does fit the bill as well. So if I trade one for one with Jinx, a bit questionable. But if I trade one for one like with Ramus, Leona, like Nasus or, or Ari, I, I wouldn't be too concerned basically. Cause although of course giving them a kill is, isn't really like ideal, but getting a kill for myself is ideal. So I, I would be willing to trade one for one personally. Of course, I ra of course, uh, you always rather not die, but if you know it happens, I wouldn't be too upset about it. Is is basically what I'm trying to say. So here, Jinx wave clear pretty decent with her rockets, so uh, a little bit hard to push uh, up against the Jinx. Meanwhile, the Nasus in the top lane is getting fed, which honestly for me I'm not too concerned about because as I said, I'm a vein. If like Leona gets gets fed, if like Ramus gets fed, if if Nasus gets fed, I really am not too concerned. I'm, because wh whoever they, they are, they're, they're going to be building mostly tank. Like, as you can see, Ramus has gone for Bramble Vest into uh, what looks like a Sunfire. I think he has like three components, so no idea what he's really building there. But yeah, Leona has Deadman's Plate and going for another armor item. Nasus has Deadman's Plate going for a damage item, maybe try for a second. But basically, the, all that armor against me doesn't really do anything, just simply because Vayne does true damage, so really it doesn't actually matter. So if Nasus gets fed, uh, it doesn't really concern me too much. So I'm just waiting for like when we get to mid or late game where we get into team fights, then I can just shut him down or I can just simply just kill him because it really isn't, it really isn't that hard as a Vayne to kill any kind of tank, of course. So here. Uh, we see that there is a Rift Herald fight. Now really there are two options in this scenario as I always say, which is to rotate to the Rift Herald fight or to push the tower. So here, since Nami didn't rotate to the Rift Herald fight, we're just going to push the tower. But unfortunately, Jinx has pretty high wave clear. I personally think that the play would be for Nami to rotate. Normally I think support rotating for Rift Herald is generally the move and AD carries just stay in the lane to farm slash push. So since we can't get the tower, instead going to get the Skull Crab. I'll just get... You know, any form of advantage for our team, like get a bit, get the skull crab goal, get the vision in the river, and here we spot a rogue Leona coming towards us. We use the skull crab movement speed to try to get off, uh, try to go onto her, but uh, it doesn't really happen. Instead, we get collapsed upon. Nice out by the Galio to disrupt the Leona. Here, I'm just going to free fire onto the Leona. Ramus comes in, and I have to instead switch targets to the Ramus just because. Uh, he is basically on top of me and nothing much I can do. Here, I, I thought that auto attack would kill the Ramus. That is, it doesn't. So I am forced to flash over to follow. And that causes me to die to the Jinx. So, uh, sort of a little bit of a miscalculation there. That I thought the last auto attack would be enough to finish him. As you guys saw, I started turning around and I realized, wait a minute, he isn't dead. So to, to close the gap, I had to flash to, to get the kill. And therefore, I traded one for one. Uh, and the kill went to the Jinx, so that is sort of the least ideal situation trading one for one. If the Jinx, uh, if the kill went to anybody else, I would be fine, but unfortunately it went to the Jinx, so maybe not the best trading my, my life for a Ramus. So, but anyways, Jinx gets caught out by Lee Sin and she gets shut down. So, um, pretty much with that, we can go on to the Dragon. Of course, Ari is, is um, in the area, but we're just going to kill her first, and then we can go for the Dragon. Lee Sin is kind of 1 HP, so all he has to do is stick around the area and pretty much just show up to smite the dragon, basically. Like, here he's, he's, he's on the Krugs. 
Doesn't really matter, he can lifesteal off the Krugs, do what he needs to do, but just be in the area to smite the dragon. As long as he doesn't like recall its fine. So here, he comes in on the dragon, gets uh, hit by the Jinx rocket, thankfully has enough health to survive, and we get the dragon. So we're doing pretty well uh, in terms of objectives so far. Rift Herald is still up and available. No one has actually taken the Rift Herald uh, as of yet, so... Uh, kind of, it's kind of ignored at the moment. So Jinx finally isn't in the bot lane. She has ma kind of made a mistake and went to mid lane instead. So here, this allows us to push the tower and hopefully try to uh, get the tower and we do. So we do secure the tower, push out the wave of course and we can back to buy items. So here, we already have the Bork. We're gonna complete the Solar Recharge Blade and probably build towards the Zanya's Hourglass. Yep, play it Steel Caps picked up. Of course, we're into a pretty heavy um, AD team except for the Ari. although the three tanks wouldn't exactly do a whole lot of damage. But yeah, so here, Jinx gets caught out again, Riven gets a double kill onto the uh, enemy bot lane. And really, things are going pretty well for us. So here, we finally find the Nasus. So here, I, oh, I'm going straight onto the Nasus. boom, boom, boom. We melt him instantly and he's gone. So yeah, that is what we can do to a Nasus even if he's fed. So he he was 4-1-1 one, one just now, now he's 4-2-1. So really, uh, when Nasus is fed, nothing too much to worry about. He has completed his Triforce, but it honestly doesn't really matter too much for us. Uh, all we gotta do is just kite the Nasus. We can kite the Nasus really, really well as a Vayne, because we can constantly tumble away from him, and he doesn't really have any kind of dash. He does have the Righteous Glory though, so that is something to take note of and be wary of that he can uh, use that to close the gap. But aside from that, nothing um, of huge concern. So here we pick up the Zanya's Hourglass, pick up a long sword, start building towards that Infinity Edge. And we're all good. So here uh, Galio actually manages to ult out of a bad fight and pretty much nothing happens here. So now we're in like, you know, that always there's that lull period of the game, the, the very like neutral game when no objectives are up to take and like nothing is really happening and both teams are generally just clearing wave because you, you, you cannot really just walk uh, up at the enemies. Of course in this game we can, which is exactly what we're going to do on the Nasus. We're going to try to 1v5 the Nasus, which are honestly not really necessary. Now I actually accidentally condemned the minion instead of the Nasus, but obviously Nasus can't survive 5 people. So here I'm going to 5 men push the top lane. And this is a very, I would say very kind of like a, a like dirty solo queue strat, like not really dirty but uh, like it's a very good solo queue strat where if you 5 men push and the enemy team is spread out, they all try to respond to you and they come in one by one. As you can see, we picked up the Nasus, uh, Leona and Jinx arrive, we kill the Leona and Jinx, then Ramus and Ari arrive, of course they're under tower so we can't instantly kill them but, but here uh, we are actually just perma ceasing Nasus, uh, the, the uh, Ramus and we kill the Ramus, so pretty much that, that is kind of like a, a kind of like a mini strat that you can use in Solo Queue. Of course, we don't overstay our welcome, and we are gonna hightail it out there. Um, Nasus withers Nami, so I'm just gonna condemn him away so that uh, he doesn't get on top of the Nami. Ramus actually manages to set down the Rift Herald in mid as we're doing that whole push down for the inhibitor and everything, but there is no mid lane tower to actually take for the Rift Herald, so the Rift Herald uh, is we're gonna try our best to not let it get off a charge, which we are going to be successful in doing as you can see, so the Rift Herald is wasted. There's a huge wave in the bot lane. I thought, I expected the Galio to go there, which is why I'm clearing the mid lane, but Galio looks like he's going to recall and no one is really handling that bot wave, but uh, overall, it doesn't really matter that the bot wave is so pushed in, in the sense that we got their top lane inhibitor with a 5-man push, so um, not the worst. Dragon is coming up in 10 seconds, so of course we want to be around for that. We get the BF Sword and the Cloak as well, of course very very close to the Infinity Edge now, within 900 goals striking distance. So here obviously we are fed, uh, relatively fed I guess you could say, or we have at least hit our item breakpoint, so we're gonna go for the grid buff. And we get it, so here we are going of course to shot for Dragon Fight. We can see Nasus in the top lane and Ari in the mid lane, so at most we have to deal with like 3 people which is exactly what we find ourselves in. Of course, we, are, we have the advantage in the fight because we are 5 men and they are 3 to 4. I burst down the Leona, then then the Ramus. And at this point in time, we're just uh, kind of just chasing for the kill. Like, uh, Lee Sin can actually get the dragon by himself. So we can actually just use this map pressure that we just got to actually just simply just 
uh, push lane. Galil gets a little bit overzealous and a little bit greedy for that kill on the Ari. The Ari was pretty low and uh, Galio overextended to try to go for the Ari and he pays for it with his life. In the meantime, the Riven split pushes bot lane to actually secure the second tier tower and me and Nami go and secure the mid lane tier 2. So all tier 2s are down. And here I'm not too worried about, about anything because the, the two enemy teams are actually just respawning but they get into a fight without their teammates and as we know I melt the Nasus even if he ults doesn't really matter. Jinx finds herself alone and she dies as well. Ari uh, under the tower so we can't really get onto her but Lee Sin can get onto her gives me a special delivery for a triple kill onto the Ari. So at this point in time we all we are going to do we're just going to push straight down mid. Gonna just pretty much go for the win here. Ramus uh, can be seen. Leona probably just AFK in the base at this point. Um, Ramus simply doesn't care and we're just going to end the game. So as you can see, uh, Vayne still really good in the current patch. Pretty balanced I would say. Still can carry games very easily. And with that out of the way, leave you guys with the stats as usual. So thank you guys for watching the video and goodbye.